Hello, beach friends. Today we will be traveling once again up north. We're headed to a place called Stump Pass, which is located on Minnesota Key. And thank you to everyone who recommended me coming here because I finally found one of my bucket list shells. So I'm super psyched to share this with you. We're gonna say hi to a manatee. We're gonna say hi to some birds. We are definitely gonna find some shells and we're gonna do a little bit of snorkeling. So if you're ready for your weekly dose of beachy goodness, including a really awesome shell, let's go to the beach. entering Stump Pass Beach State Park. I'm a big fan of the Florida State Parks. They're usually quite beautiful. And this one also is only $3. So it is kind of an honor system. So you put your money in the envelope and you stick it in the that little green box there. It does have a tiny little pavilion, place for your bikes. It's got a little foot shower and facilities. So it's always nice to know what you'll find when you come here. Now, because it is a state park, it does have a little trail and there is a trailhead here with a couple of shells that you might find. And you'll notice there, you might also find shark's teeth. And that drove me a little crazy. I'll talk about that in a, in a little while. So there is a little, there's some signs telling you about all the goodies you might see. And as I was gonna say, there is a little trail, but we're not gonna walk the trail. We are gonna walk on the beach side because why would we miss the opportunity to maybe find some goodies on the beach? So we're getting here on the beach. Looks like there are no dogs allowed. Womp womp. Looks like a pretty nice day. And the first thing I always do is go straight for the water. All right, a couple of shells there, but I'm really kind of interested to see what's here in the water, what the conditions are. Are there things rolling around? Is it clear? So it looks to me it is super clear. And there are some things rolling around. Okay, we'll start off with a turkey wing. Not the most pristine specimen I've ever found, but that's okay. Looks like it's going to be a lovely day. And because of the way that the park is situated, there's not gonna be a lot of people that we'll encounter because you really kind of gotta walk 1.3 miles to the end of the island here. So you'll notice in the water there's white, which is the shells, and here we go, there's a calico clam. And there's also a lot of little black specks. Here we have a spiny jewel box, although it's not very spiny, but what I thought was kind of nice about this guy is I never really noticed the beautiful kind of turn of this shell. I'm usually so focused on the spikes, so Wanted to just admire that lovely shape of the shell and here I see a whole bunch of fish in the water and I am going to do some snorkeling later so I'm hoping we'll we'll see some critters along the way and look at this a piece of sea glass now I would classify that as sea glass it is all rounded on the edges kind of cool definitely do not find that very often down here and this is a very common shell this is a calico scallop but it had those beautiful orange I call them like sunbeam rays. It's just lovely. And this bright orange scallop. Oh, so pretty. I am in the market for some orange shells, so that'll go nicely with my collection. A couple more bivalves. On the left is a calico clam, and then we have another calico scallop. Now, as I'm making my way down the beach, there's only that one entrance up there from a driving standpoint. So if you want to get to the very end of the island, you're going to have to walk, which I love. Love being out and about, away from parking lots and hotels. So I scooped a little bit and managed to find a serif. So there are little goodies in there. And I did bring my scoop. I brought, a, <laughs> brought my scoop. I got my snorkel mask. Oh, okay, there's another spiny jewel box. He's got a little bit of spine to him. I find a really spiky one. That's a little bit later today. 
but that is a lovely spiny jewel box. And the turtles are here, whole bunch of turtle nests. So they make their way up here as well. Okay, a bay scallop, not the most pristine specimen I've ever found, but that is a bay scallop. And here is a calico scallop. I know sometimes they're kind of hard to tell apart. I'll try to point out the difference between the other different bivalves. That is a prickly cockle, a Florida prickly cockle, and another turkey wing. All right, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what kind of, is, what kind of condition is that shell? What kind of stuff is that? That's a pretty good looking turkey wing. And some more bivalves, another calico scallop, and some calico and a calico clam on the bottom there. Oh, and another turkey wing, a little guy, nice color. So my favorite spot is kind of in the water there, but I will never resist at least checking out a shell pile and see what kind of stuff is here. I see another turkey wing, a bunch of the common stuff, which is, you know, that's pretty much run of the mill. You're gonna find your arcs. I see a couple beat up olives, crossbarred Venus. So a whole lot of common shells, but still really exciting to at least see shells on the beach. Yay. Oh, there's a lettered olive complete with its little top. I made my way back into the water. Oh, it would have been so cool if there was a shark tooth stuck in the uh, olive. Oh, that is a lovely turkey wing. Beautiful color, whoop, there, beautiful color. A lovely turkey wing. And another olive. Okay, Mwah. no shark's teeth. So it was such a pretty day and I'm gonna go ahead and give you some beach time. Now I'm excited to get to the very end because I can't wait to see what's down there. But as we're going, I'm kind of zigzagging back and forth. Now that is another bay scallop. Oh, nice and big. Color's not great, but there is a hole in it. I, I might have tried to keep that, but the hole made me decide to leave it for somebody else. All right, there's a piece of a shark eye. What else we got? Okay, quahog, <laughs> a quahog or a quahog, southern quahog. Now, I will tell you so many times, there's a little calico scallop. I have found things by checking out something common, meaning I'll go, oh, here's just a scallop and all of a sudden I'll find a baby's ear or something. So. You know, just really checking out the beach has always been quite rewarding for me. And today is definitely a story of that. Now that is a cut ribbed arc, very common. Although I don't necessarily find these so much, but I just think they're, the shape of that is beautiful. The ponderous arc, they're always, they're always, always, always on the beach. They're all over the place. But still, let's take a look and admire this fine common shell. And here's another one, a ah, buttercup leucine. I love that bright yellow color. No, it's not so fancy on the one side, but that underside, that buttery color. Oh, so pretty. So we're making our way to the very end there. We're almost at the end. There are a couple people shelling, some people fishing. Oh, there's another one of those cut ribbed arcs. I don't know what it is about them. I just think they're beautiful. Now here is a lady in waiting Venus clam. Very fancy name for this shell, complete with a little drill hole. Some, some critter drilled a hole in that shell. 
here's a couple more common things. We got your calico scallop on top, a kitten's paw, your calico clam, and a crossbarred Venus was that last one. So man, this place is pretty. So this is Stump Pass. And it is just beautiful. Tons of the skimmers, which I love funny looking birds. They're awesome. So I'm zigzagging back in the water. Oh, just a piece of an olive. Oh, well, I was kind of seeing if it was broken in any kind of particular interesting way, but nope, just a broken olive. So I am trying to enjoy the, sh the beach, the water, and I hear somebody whistle behind me and I look down and there's a manatee right there, right next to me. It was awesome. That's a Florida manatee. They are a subspecies of the West Indian manatee and they eat exclusively seagrass vegetation. They are, they are vegetarians. They're also known as a sea cow and they are awesome. You see it kind of pick its head up there. Oh, I was psyched with that encounter. I thought that was terrific. Now that is not a manatee, that is just a jetty. Although a lot of times those rocks will kind of look like a big old lumpy manatee, but we are at almost all the way at the end of Stump Pass at this point. And this is where I'm hoping things will pick up a little bit. All right, found ourselves a floored fighting conch. Okay, cool. And another Florida fighting conch. Checking out to see if there's any purple on the inside just because. And a lettered olive. No shark teeth. Oh, well. <laughs> so we've made it almost all the way around. Now, let me, all right, let's talk about exactly where this is in relation to all the other places I go. So there is Sanibel. There's Captiva. There's Coya Costa. I still have to make it over there. There's Boca Grande where we went to. And then this is where we are here. Stump Pass at Minnesota Key. Now, when you zoom in, I parked over here. And then I kind of meandered, walked all the way down the beach, all the way to the end. So this is the area where I'm going to continue to do most of my exploring at this point. Managed to find some more stuff on the beach. So we'll check out what's up here. Another Sarath. Alrighty. See if there's anything else. I'm kind of looking for, I don't know, a couple gastropods. All right, that is another bivalve, calico scallop, although it is quite lovely. Now, here we go. Here is a calico scallop on the left and a bay scallop on the right. The bay scallops, at least what I have found down here, are almost typically that orange, brownish color. Sometimes they'll have spots on it, whereas the calicos are white, pink, purple. So those are two side by side to kind of help you. Another turkey wing. Great day for turkey wings. Mm, yeah, we found some pretty awesome ones. So we'll just check that one out and put it back for somebody else. There's another one of those calico clams. And a calico scallop. Back and forth with those calicos. Another bee, a buttercup leucine. All right, I'm kind of hoping things will pick up, get a little bit more exciting because there was more opportunities, I feel, down here. Plus, I've always found kind of the end of inlets. That is a black jingle. The end parts of islands tend to have nice little shell piles. Or a lightning whelk. Okay, terrible shape. Ter <laughs> Barely has color, it's broken, but it's still a lightning whelk. So to me, that means that they're here and it will be possible to find a nicer looking shell. Ah, all right, that is the top of a banded tulip. All right, another scallop that is broken. So we'll probably leave that for somebody else. Ooh, eh, a base scallop. A little bit of discoloration on there, but you'll notice it does have kind of that orangey color to it. Okay, now that is a turkey wing imposter, is what I call it. It's also, it's a mossy arc. And then on top of there, that is a turkey wing, also known as a zigzag arc or a zebra arc. So again, seeing them side by side kind of helps. They're the same color, but they're different. And that is a sunray venus. 
clam. Haven't found one of those yet today. And there we go. There's a little lightning whelk. Pretty little shell. And a lettered olive, giving it that shine test. Oh, very nice. Nice and pointy top. A lovely lettered olive. And a shark eye. Oh, whoop. <laughs> All right, cool. Nobody's home. I'm kind of looking to see if there's any drill holes. Nope. Nobody drilled the hole in that shark eye. Woohoo. Oh, and look. Uh, it's just a piece of a true tulip. They get much bigger than the banded tulips. That's just a bottom piece. Oh, that would have been a fabulous shell. But hey, keep looking. Never know what you're going to find. Now, this was interesting. This is like the biggest channeled duck clam I've ever seen. That brown color is not supposed to be there. It is supposed to be just white. But this shell, particular shell anyway, was just huge. Kind of a pretty shell. They're rather delicate. Just wanted to check it out. Oh, piece of a crown conch. All right, that means they're here too. Very cool, just a piece. And another sunray Venus. All right, at least we're getting a little bit of variety here. And the birds were screaming. As soon as one of the birds, I don't know if you noticed, that bird had a fish in its mouth. And so all the other little, littler, you know, Baby birds are screaming. <laughs> it was funny. All right, there is a Florida fighting conch. It's a little chipped, but perfect for some sort of project where you're just gonna kind of hold it like that. I'm gonna keep it. <gasps> there we go. Oh, beautiful apple murex. Gorgeous, intact, nice size, nice color. All right, now we're talking. I put, ugh. Yeah, the sand is a little softer here, so it's possible that would have been a whole banded tulip, but no. But that's okay, look what we found, another apple murex. All right, cool, he's a little bit smaller than that other one we picked up, but still a fantastic find. All right, that is one of those tinted cantharis shells. Bunch of stuff jammed in there. Meh, I'm gonna leave that for somebody else. All right, now this shell I've never found before, so I was having a little bit hard of a time identifying it. So I'm about 95% certain it is a broad paper cockle. So I thought that was really cool. Never found one before. And a bay scallop. A little, oh, it's not a little bitty shark eye. It's just a broken shark eye, but we got a base scallop out of it, so that's okay. Oh, okay, that is a lightning whelk. All chewed up and broken. Looks like I did a little scooping and got myself one of these little Florida fighting conks. All right, put that in the shell bag. Now look at that. It's practically glowing. That's a base scallop, beautiful base scallop. Awesome. And then this, the color was also screaming to me, this like yellow scallop, very pretty color. Oh, bummer. That is a broken apple murex. It's missing, I don't know, like a third. Oh well, but when I bent down to look at that, I spied something else. I spied that, but that's not what I'm interested in showing you. What I really want to show you is this. Look, how cool is that? It's a spiny jewel box, but it's got its spines. Oh, I just think that they're so cool. Love that. That's going to go in my little box of delicates to make sure I don't break it. Oh, cool, chestnut turban. Great color, great shape. Oh, very cool. Oh, I'm happy that we're starting to find a little bit of a variety down here, yay. All right, what do I see rolling around? Yeah, I saw a lightning whelk, but it's just a piece. 
and a beat up floor to fighting cock. Oh well. Like I said, sometimes checking out those common stuff can lead to something really cool. Look at that. Now, it's a top snail, but I'm pretty sure that that's a sculptured top snail. Not to be confused with the jujube top snails, which... So I think that's a sculptured one. I don't know that I've ever found one. Super happy with that find. Very, very cool. And a little gaudy nautica. All right, it's colorful moon snail. Not in terrific shape, but that is okay. Still happy to see that little shell. So every week I do go out and I bring you a new video and I just like, I don't know, to remind you, you could subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be doing giveaways. I try to do other special things once in a while. So make sure that you don't miss out and subscribe, hit the notification bell, just in case I do something, you'll be notified and you won't miss out. Oh. There is another calico scallop. But look, look at the little flat. And that's what I mean. Sometimes like looking for one thing leads to finding something else. So I do kind of like to check out everything. And there are people snorkeling out there. I don't know if you can see, there's two little people out there and they're gonna come into play a little bit later. I was trying to show you that a manatee was swimming out there with them. You can't really see it, but I was just fascinated. Now. They're really, really far out. And I am going to do some snorkeling, but I don't want to go that far out. A little bit chicken. <laughs> so I'm going to stay a little bit closer to the beach. But at this point, I am ready to get in the water. We've done a lot of, found, found a lot of great stuff on land, but it's time to switch up the cameras and get in the water and see what we find. There we go. And it is a little bit more. I did do some snorkeling over at Boca Grande and there wasn't a whole lot, but here at least I'm seeing some things. So like I said, like I thought that was a piece of a lightning whelk, but that's just a little piece of something. So it makes the visibility a lot better when you're actually, you know, got your mask on and you're right down there. Ah, just a piece of a banded tulip. So I'm going to go over and check out kind of by that jetty, by those rocks, see what I can find over here. All right, there definitely are shells. Oh, hi, fish. A couple of shells. Let's see what's around the corner here. All right, there's definitely stuff here. So hopefully we'll find something good. Now there's say, some fish. I think that's a sheep's head, that striped guy there. There might have been some snook in the background. I'm not a fish expert by any means, but just fun to see the critters when you're under here. It'd be great if that manatee came back. That'd be awesome. So I am seeing stuff here, which is, like I said, which is good. I know I missed a broken shark eye at some point. Yep, there it is. It's broken though. I can see the big old hole in it. So I'm having myself a good old time. All right, dive down. Well, kind of go under <laughs> and grab that. It looks like a possibly a rough scallop. Oh, but this, no mistake what that is. That is a sand dollar. All right. Isn't that crazy? Just sitting there. Woohoo. And another one. All right, cool. We got ourselves two sand dollars. Now, I don't have a bag or anything with me. I'm kind of just stuffing stuff into my bathing suit. So I'm going to have to get out and put those away so I don't break them. Oh, look, little lightning whelk. Oh, and it's in good shape too. Good color. It's not broken. Maybe a little tiny chip. Still happy with that. Woohoo! So I get out, put my treasures in my little box. I just kind of want to show you how far away from the shore I am. I'm really not that far. The water is not that deep. So I'm feeling safe, kind of, you know, checking things out. Oh, I thought that would have been a huge sand dollar, but it's just a piece. There we have a Florida fighting conch. All right, cool. I see this little piece of clam shell. Let's check that out. Oh, that's not a piece of clam shell, friends. That is a giant horse conch. I'm like freaking out in my head right now because I can't believe that I have finally 
I just dropped that Florida Fighting Kong. Who <laughs> cares about that? I did it. I found a giant horse Kong. I was over the moon. I could not believe it. Look how far I am or how close I am to the shore. The water is not deep at all. And just because I thought it was a piece of a clamshell, I was just gonna flip it over. But no, that is what I got instead. This beautiful giant horse conch. I was freaking out. I was so over the moon happy. But I'm still in the water. I figure, okay, while I'm here, let's see. Maybe there'll be something else we can uncover. But I'm really just over the moon. So I'm trying to contain myself, still looking for a couple of shells. Found another Florida fighting conch and another Florida fighting conch. But I will admit I was very distracted. I really just wanted to get out of the water and look at my horse conch. So I did find those. Cool, very cool Florida fighting conchs. But I really want to talk about this. So this ended up measuring just a little bit over 12 inches long. I have been looking for well over a year and a half and I could not believe it. I mean, there are days where I go out and I'm thinking, okay, today's the day. I had no idea that today was going to be the day that I finally found my giant horse conch. And it was awesome. I am so excited. I was excited. I still am. I mean, this was really, really cool for me. And I did what any good self-respecting sheller would do is I took the shell on a little photo shoot. Thank you for indulging me. I was really so excited about finding that shell. So I did a little fun little photo shoot with it. I did, it was so fun. And just in case you were wondering what I was using to snorkel, I, I do have the full face mask, really easy to use, small enough, I just throw it in my backpack. So that's easy enough to bring along with me. And boy, am I glad I got in the water today. Oh, so I'm still on my shell high. Still all sorts of happy. I found my shell. I couldn't wait to come home and put this video together to show you guys. I finally got my giant horse conch. I'm shocked at the way I found it. I really didn't think it was going to be, you know, flipping over what I thought was going to be a piece of clam, but there we have it. I finally did it. And the skimmers, and look, you see the little baby skimmers with their giant heads. Oh, they're just so cute. So I wanted to show you those little guys. It was so fun. Now, remember when I was talking about those other two people who were out snorkeling? Well, I came out of the water, the gentleman realized I had the shell. He called his wife over and she was mad. And I've been there, I've been there where, you know, I was really looking for something and I didn't end up with it. So I felt bad, but hopefully one of these days she'll find hers like I found mine. So look how fun that is. Somebody, brought their giant inflatable, anchored their boat. Oh man, that did look like fun. And then the universe said, hey, take this one too. So this was the last shell I picked up off the beach as I was leaving. It is a beautiful lacy murex. It does need a little bit of help cleaning up, but it is gorgeous. And then this awesome shell, which I missed on the way in, but I wanted to show you. So let's talk about what we found today. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Before we get into all the other stuff, I really do just want to focus on this fantastic shell. It's the first time I'll ever find my first horse conch. So I really want to revel in this moment. But we did find some other pretty cool stuff. We found tons of turkey wings. And I did keep that one cut ribbed arc. A couple of bunch of scallops, both bay and calico scallops. A couple of those calico clams. A couple of Florida flighting conchs. Sunray Venus, we have found the spiny jewel box, olives, shark eyes, including that colorful moon snail, 
And now we're heading into my favorite section, that flat, the sea glass, the lace murex, the sand dollars, the apple murex, sculptured top snail, chestnut turban, spiky, spiky jewel box, and my big, beautiful horse conch. It is currently soaking in bleach right now. It will be, I will treasure that forever. So thank you guys so much for coming along with me. It was so much fun. And a special shout out to my Patreons who literally financially support me as I go out and I do all my beach walks. So guys, thanks for coming along. I, I had the best time. It was truly incredible finding that big monster that I've been hunting down. I can't wait to find more, but that first one was really just rem completely incredible for me. So thank you again for coming along. Not sure where we're going to go next week. I promise I'll make it fun. Hope you have a great week and see you next Sunday.